everyone. This is Donna, the Technology and Media Librarian for Upper Arlington Public Library. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you how you can use the Libby app to download ebooks and digital audiobooks to your mobile device. If you're already familiar with OverDrive and the OverDrive app, you know that you can borrow thousands of ebooks and digital audiobooks with your Upper Arlington Public Library card and transfer those books to different types of mobile devices and e-readers. Libby is also an app from OverDrive, and it has the same collection as you'd find on OverDrive. It's just a faster borrowing and reading process. So if you want to borrow, read, and return a book or an audiobook, everything happens through the app. No multiple sign-ins with your library card, no downloading and moving from bookshelf to menu and back again. Everything from your library to your bookshelf to the books that you read are all in one app, and it's all designed to be streamlined and quick. For that reason, we tend to recommend Libby for new ebook and audiobook users, but even if you're a longtime OverDrive user and you're watching this video, we might make a convert out of you to try the Libby app. It's available to download for Apple mobile devices from your Apple App Store. If you have an Android mobile device, you'll download Libby from the Google Play Store. But even if you don't have a mobile device, you can still use Libby on your computer with your web browser, and that's what I'll be demonstrating in this series of videos. If you are following along with a mobile device, you may notice a few differences that are device specific, but overall the Libby app, which you're looking at right now, will function the exact same no matter what device you have. So in this first video, I'll show you how you can add your library card to Libby, how to borrow a book and an audiobook, and how to place a hold. So get your library card ready and we'll get started. Um, this will look a little bit different, again, if you're using an Apple device, like an iPhone or an iPad, if you're using an Android smartphone or tablet, or if you're using a Windows 10 device, because you can use Libby on Windows devices as well, or straight up from your browser. So um, if you are using the Libby app on a tablet or a smartphone, you will start this process in the App Store by downloading the Libby app and then opening it. Um, but when you first open the Libby app on your tablet or smartphone, this is the screen that you're gonna see. It's gonna ask you if you have a library card and here's where your UAPL card comes in handy. We're gonna go ahead and say, yes, we do have a card. And if you have Libby on other devices, let's say you have multiple tablets that you use, you're using one phone and a tablet at the same time, you know, maybe for listening in your car versus reading at home, you can click copy from my other device. And so if Libby is already installed there, you could just copy your cards across devices. It'll give you a code so that you can input it on the new device. But for us first time users, we're gonna say I'll search for a library and that way we can look up our library and enter our card information. So here we'll click I'll search for a library. And we're gonna type in Upper Arlington Public Library. You can also do this by zip code. And here the matching library is Digital Downloads Collaboration. That is the correct matching library. We're part of a consortium with multiple other libraries. Columbus, Bexley Library, Grandview Heights, we're all part of the Digital Downloads Collaboration. So you can go ahead and click on that name in order to get started, which I'll do right now. And then it just wants you to verify where you use your library card. So my card is with Upper Arlington Public Library, so I can enter my Upper Arlington Public Library card number. We'll click here. Go ahead and enter your card number and click sign in. For Upper Arlington card holders, you are not going to need your PIN for this part of the process. Um, you just need the card number and it'll let you know you're signed in. Here's your library card. You can rename this card. Um, you can call it UAPL. You can call it, you know, top card, you can call it whatever you'd like. If you're adding multiple libraries from the digital downloads collaboration, so if you'd like to add your Columbus card, you'd like to add your Bexley card, it might be more helpful to name it by library location so you know which one you're using. So I'll just go ahead and call it Upper Arlington. We'll hit save and then we'll go ahead and click next. And this is what digital downloads collaboration will look like whether you're using the smartphone or tablet app or if you're here on your computer like I am. So up at the top of the page, you can hit search for a book. This is where you can enter title, author, or keyword in books. Um, click cancel. If you click here on this Libby icon, this is your menu. It'll tell you which library you're in, digital downloads, 
you can see your library cards. So I know I've got Upper Arlington as the library card information I have loaded onto this app. And hit back. And you can also manage your notifications so that as books become available for you to check out after placing them on hold, if you have any books that are um, about to return, or if you've just returned a book, you can tell Libby to give you notifications about all of those things. I'm going to show you that in a future video. For now, we're just going to hide this Libby app. And you can see this is where you really start browsing for library books. Um, you can download both ebooks and digital audiobooks on Libby. You can scroll through this homepage to see some of the curated collections. So these are different topics with titles that fit that topic selected by librarians. Um, you can see what's new. You can see what's popular. Definitely make note of what's available. We're going to go through that in the next video where I can show you how you can um, narrow down your search results so you're not looking through lots of books that are on hold, but you can check out something immediately. Um, you can explore using the catalog guides about subjects, about spotlighted topics. You can even search the Lucky Day collection, and these are in-demand titles that have shorter loan periods, but they're available for instant checkout. I like to explore by subject, and there's a couple ways you can do that. You can scroll down here to explore subjects, or if we go up here to the top of the page, I'm going to click this explore button. Let's go ahead and tap on that on your app. And then here you have different guides to different topical titles. Here's that what's new, popular, and available section again. But I'm just going to go straight over here to subjects. I'm looking for craft books. We're all at home. We're all looking for fun things to do. I need a craft or a DIY project to keep myself busy. So I'm going to scroll through these subjects and see what's available on crafts. So You'll see next to each subject name, there's a number that reflects the number of ebooks and audiobooks that are available with the subject collection. And then here I've got my crafts. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. So you can see it's listing both books and audiobooks. I have not filtered out anything that's um, in one particular format or another, although you can set your preference so you're only seeing audio or you're only seeing ebook. I also haven't narrowed down my results already so that I'm not seeing books that I would place on hold. So this is showing me everything that's currently available to check out and everything that is currently checked out to other patrons and I would have to add myself to the waitlist for. Like I said in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can set those preferences automatically. Um, but here I'm just going to scroll through and I'm going to take a look for something that kind of catches my interest. Um, let's see. Got some knitting books. We're looking for anything that says borrow because borrow means that it's available for us to check out ASAP. I'm going to say let's do this complete crochet course. You can just click this borrow button and it starts the checkout process, but I like to click on the book to get all those fun title details. Here's where you can read the description. Here is where you can see the author, but also click on this link here or this publisher link, anything that's bolded, because that'll show you more results using this author's name, this publisher's name. It'll tell you how many copies are available when it was released. Um, you can also see, you can click here to get more of those subjects. So if I clicked on this crafts button, I would see the crafts collection, or I could go to the nonfiction collection, and I can find some similar titles down here at the bottom of my screen. But if this is a book that you like, we're going to hit borrow right here. So you tap that on your app and then it'll also give you the option to set your loan period. So if you click here where it says 21 days, I can change my loan period from 21 to either seven or 14 days. I'm going to leave it at 21 and like the longer loan period. And if all of that's set, you're going to click this red borrow button down at the bottom of the screen. So you can start reading immediately after you've checked it out by hitting open book. Um, you can go back to the library by hitting keep browsing. I'm going to go to my bookshelf though because I want you to see what that looks like and see all the different details about a book. So this is what your app would look like as well. Um, you're on your bookshelf here. So this is everything that's checked out to your library card here under loans and then everything that's on hold using your library card number under holds and you can also set up some tags so that you can identify books and create a more um, elaborate bookshelf for yourself and find books. Um, what you can do here is click open book and this will start reading it or you can hit manage loan to get more details about your book. It'll give you the exact due date and time 
it will give you the option to return your book early if you'd like. So you can put it back in the pool for people to check out if you're all done, or you can let your loan lapse when your 21 days are over. And you can click here to go back to the book details in your library. So if you wanted to check out more books by that author or browse by that publisher, you could go back to your book details. Um, you can also opt to send to a device. I'm going to show you this in a later video because you can send Libby books to Kindle devices if you'd like to read on your Kindle rather than on a tablet or a smartphone. So that's coming up in a later video. But if we wanted to open our book, we just click open and then you'll see here in the middle of the screen, you can swipe on your keyboard, which is what I'm using, or you can swipe on your tablet or your smartphone. So you'll just swipe to advance through your book. Um, and then if you tap or click in the middle of your book, these are your book options, your menu of options. So here's where you can set to either read on one page or read on two pages per screen. You can click on the magnifying glass to search within a book um, and search for you know a keyword or a phrase. You can bookmark a place in the book. So if you click on this bookmark button, um, you can come back to that section of the book by accessing your bookmarks. And to get to those, you'll click here on your little hamburger menu. Um, you'll still have that search function. You can click on chapters to not only see what's coming up, but you can also advance forward or move backward through the book by clicking on a chapter title. So I can move ahead by clicking on a chapter here. Or I can go back to the bookmark that I just set up by clicking here on bookmarks and I can go back to that cover page. Also when you click in the center of your book you'll see that you can advance through the book by dragging the scroll here which I'm not going to do and you can also get back to your library or get back to your bookshelf by clicking on either of these buttons here or tapping on either of these buttons since you're using your app. So if I click on shelf I go back to my bookshelf if I click on library, I go back to the last page on Libby that I was browsing. And if I click on my book cover, I go back to the book and the last place I was in the book. So that's what that would look like if you were um, reading an ebook. We can go back to the library to continue to browse. I'll show you what this looks like. So if we click on library, we're back here on our Libby page. You can go back each page in the top left corner. So the last page we were on was the craft subject guide. Every time you click on this button, it'll take you back one page. You can click up here. You can scroll back. You can do subjects. We can also, everywhere we see the magnifying glass, we can click and we can search for a book by searching for title or author directly. So I'll show you next how you can do that. Um, let's say you're searching for a particular author. I think I saw Nick Offerman's book before. Um, so if you're a Parks and Rec fan or if you like Ron Swanson, um, you might want to check out his craft book. So I've typed in his name. Here are my search results. I can see that he's the author. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on his name here. And here's everything matching his name. And now you can see, and I just wanted to point this out as well, You'll know it's an audiobook because it'll have this little audio icon at the bottom of the book cover. So it'll have the earbud icon, it'll say audio, and rather than read a sample, it'll tell you you can play a sample. And that's how you know that you're listening to an audio. Um, and let's say that this is exactly the book that I was looking for. You know, I wanted good, clean, fun. I'm going to click borrow because this is the book that I like, but I can also click on the book cover to get all those great title details. So it'll tell me my format, duration. This is an abridged edition. Um, I can click here to see the author or the narrator again, or I can click here on borrow to get started. So this is what an audiobook will look like if you click borrow. You'll again, set your loan period, make sure that you're checking it out to the right cards, my Upper Arlington card, or click borrow. And here, rather than go to shelf, I'm just gonna click on open audiobook. And this will start playing in my web browser, or if you're using the app, it'll start playing in the app for you. So I can hit this play button to begin. I'm just going to pause that. Um, again, I can go back to my library, or I can go back to my shelf to see my loans and my holds by tapping here. Again, I can scroll through to advance throughout the book. 
And then up here at the top, here are my menus. Um, this will change the timing and speed on your audiobook, so you can set it to be um, up to two times as fast as the normal speed. I'll put that back at one. Um, you can click here on the little moon icon, that's your sleep timer, so it'll turn off after 30 minutes. You can again set a bookmark for audiobooks, so this will bookmark it at whatever um, moment you've paused. And then you can click on your hamburger menu, again you get your chapters, you can scroll through and select a chapter you'd like to skip to or skip back to, and then you can access your bookmarks from here and go back and forward through the book. So that's what audiobooks would look like. I'm going to take you back to the library and I'm just going to show you final thing how you can place a hold on a book. So let's say again you have your search results. This is the book you like but you notice it says place hold. That means the book is not currently available to check out but you can add yourself to the holds list. Just go ahead and hit place hold on that. It'll tell you which card you're using to place the hold, and then you'll confirm. And then once you've placed a hold, you can keep browsing, you can read a sample. Actually, what I like to do though is go to shelf again so I can show you these details. Here's our bookshelf. This is what we've currently checked out. So we have one audiobook, we have one ebook. But if we go up here to holds, you can see this one's telling me it'll be available soon. I have another book that's been um, placed on holds. I have about two weeks left on my hold. And if we want to manage our hold, we can click manage hold. It'll tell you when you placed it. You can opt to then either suspend your hold or cancel it altogether. So that's getting started with Libby. Um, in the next video, I will show you how you can set your preferences so that you only find certain formats or availability before you even start browsing. So it'll really narrow down your search options as soon as you get started. Thank you so much for watching.